Welcome back to the fifth video of the IB Python 3 notebook series. In this video, we're going to look at the count and portfolio functions of the API. So we'll start by loading our modules. In this example, we'll be connecting to the IB gateway using the e-demo and the demo user uh, for the password. Client ID 5 matching our notebook number. So let me just drag the window here briefly. We will connect. And this just shows that our connection is now active. So something I should have mentioned in the introductory video, using the tab completion for IPython, we have using the IB object we just created, we have the client, which we use frequently when we make our requests. We have our client ID number. So if I just do that, for instance, that gives me five, which is the client ID I specified here. Using the IB object, we can connect, we can disconnect, or we can look at the containers. These are the container objects which have been holding our data. The numbers correspond to the function, the e wrapper uh, function. And these are uh, custom built containers which are thread safe and hold the data until we retrieve it. So we'll go back to our client, use tab completion again. And these are the underlying functions, the e client so socket functions that make requests to the server uh, itself and some custom functions that are in here as well. So that's just a quick intro on that. We will quickly move on. Now, this is the eDemo account. So sometimes this account is shared with other users. Uh, you never really know what's going to be in here. When you establish a connection, it is possible to have more than one account that's returned. If you have an IRA account linked uh, linked to your uh, trade workstation or financial advisors, for instance, have more than one account. So this just takes the whole list of accounts that are returned and splits it up. Uh, it's a comma separated list and gives you the accounts that are returned. So I'll just quickly run this. In this example, there's only one account um, in this e-demo account that's returned, so that's fine. Uh, we'll loop through the accounts, which is only one, so we could just use this one account and we'll request the account updates that occur to that account. Now, I could quickly bring this back here. Um, this is the gateway, and this just shows all the information that has been received uh, from the server to the client. And we're gonna look at this information in just a minute over here. So minus one gives me the last item in the list. In this case, it's the same account. There's only one account, so I could have just used this string representation here above. Um, now, what we're looking at is the download time. When we make the request for the data, request account updates, um, all that information which I showed previously starts streaming through. The client doesn't know when it's done until the account download end function is called. Um, the server sends that function once all this information has been completed. The implementation of that stores the timestamp of when that is returned. So what this does here, it waits until it receives that timestamp so it knows that all the information has been received. We'll run that. Um, now I know that all the information is in the container and is up to date. So I will create a data frame of all that information that's been returned. And I will show all the non-currency account values. So those are the ones with account values that are blank. And I'll transpose that when I'll display it to make it more readable. So here, there's no currency um, amount. These are just values that are attached. For instance, the account number. Uh, so these are those bits of data. Now we'll show all the currency account val balances that are not equal to zero. There's lots of balances which are zero, but we'll just exclude those. Uh, we'll exclude it here. And again, transpose results. 
So these show all the balances here. Now, a lot of these have a um, dash S attached to them, for instance. And up here is a dash C. That stands for securities and commodities. Right there, securities and commodities. So let's say we're only interested in the securities account balances. Then we can filter our data frame for uh, the dash S. And this returns all the dash S values um, and the corresponding results that you get for those. Now let's just print the account's net liquidation value. $482,000. That wasn't my trading, just so you know. Someone has been losing some money today on the uh, demo account. We'll look at the account update times that have been returned and uh, print those out. So typically every three minutes, uh, the account values are updated. And the last update time was at 1224 in this example. Now for the portfolio data itself, we'll look at the positions here. Um, this looks at the container for the update portfolio method, uh, which is sent back and uses the list comprehension to store that. Um, we'll run this function. These are all the positions which have been returned. There is a euro dollar position. Uh, yeah, for the positions, um, it is returned as a list. You'll get more than one at different update times. And this keeps the whole sequence of events. So for instance, at 12.22, 5.45 seconds, this is what uh, the position was. Um, the market price was 71.75 for the symbol CSC. And there was no position, so this is has a zero value. It's a bad example. Uh, Euro dollar here, we have two positions, the same. One is time stamped at 1224. The other is time stamped at 1222. The market price in this case is the same uh, during that period. So again, that's unfortunately not a very good example. Um, and it doesn't look like we have any other open positions in the e-demo account right now. Um, but that's um, what this is storing is a full sequence of the positions. Now, if we only want to see the latest position, there's a return for each product. We just um, need to prefix it with this zero. The way the information is stored is the most recent information is on the left of the list or the first element of the list. So this gives us the most recent position of every um, unique contract returned that is, uh, that is held. So below we'll list the contract identifiers of these positions and their latest market value. The only meaningful, there's only one position of any value in this, in this example, $2.7 million for uh, euro dollar. Then we'll cancel all of our account updates and disconnect. And that concludes this video.